This video is brought to you by Patreon. Join Jay Ziagi's Patreon today for access to exclusive Telegram Patreon chats and perks. If you have been following me for a while, then you know that I have reviewed many speakers, including many bookshelf or stand mount speakers. Naturally, one of the most frequently asked questions is, what is the bookshelf or stand mount speakers I would keep for myself? Again, if you have been following me for a while, you know that there are two speakers that stand out for me in this category. The Solos Faber Electamator 3 and the TAD ME1 speakers. I reviewed both speakers, so I will link to those videos in the description box below. Truly, these speakers are amazing for different reasons, which we will get into in this video. But there is a small problem with these speakers, and that is that they are both more than $10,000, which is a lot of money. I really could not find a bookshelf speaker under $10,000 that I would keep for myself that I would personally be satisfied with over these two until now. And I am not talking about getting close, but on the level for a lesser price, legitimately. Introducing the Concept 300 by Q Acoustics. This is a two-way loudspeaker with a suggested frequency response of 55 Hertz to 30 kilohertz. And looking at my set of measurements, we can see that the stated 55 Hertz is a F3 value indicating the plus minus three dB point. However, this is an anechoic response and I was able to get more extension uh, in the bass in my room through room gain as we will talk about later. This speaker retails for about 5,000 US dollars including a kick-ass stand that we will talk about shortly. 5,000 US dollars is not an inexpensive price tag but it is certainly a less expensive than a lot of my favorite bookshelf speakers and the Concept 300 makes it hard really hard to complain about the price tag with the amount of technology and innovation involved in the speaker, which makes these truly a reference level speaker. Starting with a speaker stance, this is what Q Acoustic calls the Tensegrity speaker stand. It is a unique looking pair of speaker stands that is based on a structural principle that is often called tensional integrity or floating compression. Simply put, the structure is inherently an isolated platform that involves the stainless steel rods you see here on constant compression, while the strings here are in constant tension. This allows the rods you see here to never touch each other and be physically very stable and keep vibrations to a minimum, all while looking elegant. In fact, there is a $63 million bridge built with this principle in Australia called Quilipa Bridge, or at least I hope that's how you pronounce it. So anyways, it is extremely cool to see a speaker company build a speaker stand out of this principle. You may ask, well, is there any data to these stands performing better? And yes, Q Acoustics also measures and shows the validity of the speaker stands performing better in home audio applications on their website, which is awesome to see. It comes with spike holders that go on top of the spikes and you can adjust the height like a traditional stand as well. Q Acoustic sells these speaker stands alone for 1000 USD which you can use with other speakers and they are by far one of the best speaker stands I have ever tried. I highly recommend them but even more on the Concept 300. You see, Q Acoustics took advantage of this speaker stand to be a perfect match with the Concept 300. At the bottom of the speaker, you can see that it has this padding. This part bolts onto the speaker stand and is isolated further from the rest of the speaker itself through a spring-loaded mechanism. Effectively, you get this wobble effect as if the speaker is floating, similar to how my isoacoustic isolation devices move around. Don't worry, the speakers will not tip over, it is meant to do this for isolation. I have seen many companies attempt this floating effect to perfectly isolate the speakers from the stand itself and I have to say that this is by far the best method and execution I have seen to date. Now onto the speakers. The Concept 300 uses a soft dome tweeter that is just above 1 inches and a 6.5 inch paper cone woofer. The drivers are placed close to each other for better integration and coherency. The baffle also has a subtle curvature to minimize baffle diffraction, but also adding to the elegant aesthetics of the speakers. The cabinet itself is very inert, made of three layers of MDF with gel material sandwiched between each layer. The bracing technique is equally as impressive. Traditionally, cabinet bracing would just go on more or less wherever it makes sense, or if you want to create a very inert cabinet, you would use multiple bracings, but QQ6 takes on a more sophisticated and calculated approach, 
where they measure the cabinet at a microscopic level and implement bracings where it has the best effect in minimizing cabinet resonances. Not a scientific test by any means, but here we are knocking on the cabinet and you can get the feel that it is a very inert cabinet that rivals some metal chassis I have knocked on before. The really impressive fact is that when I played some bass heavy music at very high levels, and put my hands on the speaker itself, I felt almost no vibration from the cabinet at all. The cabinet itself is very attractive with a bold two-tone finish. The pair I have here features a very deep, and I mean seriously deep black gloss finish, and the real rosewood veneer that contrasts nicely with the black finish. I am really not a fan of black finishes, especially when they are glossy like a piano black finish as they are fingerprint nightmares, but I am a fan of this unconventionally deep black finish for some reason um, on the speaker as it contrasts really nicely with the real wood veneer. And they do have two other finishes as well, as you can see here, but the finish I have here is by far my favorite. The drivers are mounted from the inside to provide a sleek look on the front baffle. And I love that since I hate seeing screws that stick out like a sore thumb on the baffle. The crossover is also mounted on a separate board on the suspension system at the bottom of the speaker for extra isolation. And they are using reasonably high quality parts. On the back of the speaker, you see two sets of really nice big binding posts. These are perhaps my favorite set of binding posts I have seen on a speaker. They are similar to ones I have seen on a $20,000 Luxman amplifier, but these are quite frankly feeling nicer and looking nicer. You also see this nice little thing just above the binding post. If you remove this little piece here entirely, you get a negative 0.5 dB adjustment on the treble. If you have it on the left side towards the negative speaker binding post, then that is the neutral point with no plus minus deviations, so zero dB. And finally, if you move it to the other side towards the positive speaker binding post, then you get a 0.5 dB gain in the treble. Now I find this almost entirely meaningless and we will get to the reason behind that later in this video, but I have measured these and they do perform their function as they should. It is a bass reflex design as you can see here, there is a port. I measured the port and it is tuned to around 44, 45 Hertz and that's where the port takes over from the woofer. Now interesting stuff happens when you plug in this port with the given port plug. Usually I am not a huge fan of port plugs that's designed to be a bass reflex design because it really doesn't sound or act like a sealed design. It is a often misconception that you can just plug the port and suddenly it turns into a sealed speaker. It doesn't work like that. But in this speaker, it does sound a lot like a really good sealed speaker to me and we will get to that. Overall, I haven't seen a stand mount speaker at this price range that is this innovative and well executed. This is something I'd expect to see at a much higher price tag like the ones I mentioned at the beginning of this video as my favorites. There is actually more innovation and technology that makes sense to me, a lot of sense in these speakers than those if you think about it. The Concept 300 sound freaking darn awesome in my room. Like, I like it enough to have this top my other references I talked about earlier in this video. It has the fun factor in warmth and tonality like the $10,000 Sonos Fabers, but it also has nuances and details like the TAV ME1s. With correct matching amplifiers, it takes it even further. To me, the Concept 300 is like a middle ground between these two loudspeakers. It's like having dark chocolate and milk chocolate at the same time. Wait, I've never tried that. Is that good? Who the hell wrote that on my script, bro? Well, I know one thing, and the Concept 300s are darn good. Not just in its concept, but in sound. Pun intended. Let me start with three things I found most impressive about the Concept 300 that makes these speakers really stand out. First of all, the soundstage really stands out on the speaker. It just disappears and easily creates a holographic, effortless soundstage that is impressive, wide, and stretches past the speakers for sure. But what is even more impressive is the depth. Give these speakers a little bit of breathing room and you are rewarded with incredible depth and realism in space. It's like sitting in a venue 
or the first seat at a private concert. I think all that effort Q Acoustic has put into the isolation really paid off here. Compared to much more expensive bookshelves I mentioned, I think the Q Acoustics are definitely on par, if not better in the sound staging and its ability to create a holographic sound. Second, it also has a really dark and quiet background and this contrastiness that I can't quite describe in words, I find it more musical because of this contr contrastiness and it's something I have discussed with my Patreons on my Patreon chat, and they also found this contrastiness when they had a chance to listen to Q Acoustic speakers. We were trying to put it into words of what we were hearing, and when I put the word contrastiness out there, they were like, oh yeah, 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 that's it. It's like there is this blackness between each instrument and the details are well formed with seemingly better imagery because of this blackness. Third, this is an all-round speaker. It performs great in many, many ways, but in a sound profile that I associate with the British sound. With silky smoothness, but still with a lot of detail in a super refined way. That allows me to listen for long periods of time, quite frankly, without ear fatigue. And this really allows the speakers to be great with many different types of music, even poor recordings and modern recordings I played for fun surprised me in how good it sounded. So those are the three things I found really impressive in the speaker that made the speakers that much more musical and enjoyable for me. Now let's break it down. In terms of bass, believe it or not, I prefer the overall sound of the speaker with the foam plugs in, and that really comes down to mostly the bass. To me, it sounded a lot more like a sealed bookshelf speaker. It was just more pleasant and seemed like I was getting more clarity and separation as well. The bass without the port plug can extend down fairly deep with room gain. I would say doesn't have the most impactful bass I've heard, but it is plenty dynamic and it certainly has tasteful textures and linear extension feeling type of bass that fills the room quite nicely. I can see a lot of people not needing a subwoofer with this speaker if they plan to use it without the port plug as it easily reaches down to around 40 hertz with room gain. I would describe the bass to be palatable with one of the most pleasant textured and nuanced bass. It's not a tower speaker, so you're not gonna get a rumble your room or startle your cat kind of bass, but it definitely has enough presence in the bass to get your foot tapping and have a full bodied warm room feeling experience. The mid range is also very nice. Vocal sounds just wet enough and smooth sounding while also being articulate enough so that the instruments or vocals don't sound muffled or cloudy. Tonality is also one of my favorites and it reminds me, again, more of that middle ground between the juicy, warmer, licious Sonos Faber sound and the articulate, detailed TAD sound. It also reminds me a lot of sealed designs like the famous BBC monitor like the LS3 5A or the Harbeth when I had the foam plugs in. Meaning it has that softness but also not as soft as some Harbeth um, speakers that I have tried. Instead, you do get plenty of balanced detail both in the mid-range and the high frequencies. Now talking about the high frequency though, I find the highs on these speakers to be pretty darn refined. It is smooth and extended, but it also is capable of giving you really nice sparkly sweetness on the top when matched with gear that lends itself to those capabilities, which we will get to in a minute. In terms of treble though, this speaker is overall really flexible even without the plus minus 0.5 dB adjustment from the back. And that is because this speaker has a pretty good off-axis response and behaves like a lot of speakers do where if you tilt the speakers towards you, you will get more treble. If you tow it slightly away, you get less treble. I find the placement to be a better solution than the 0.5 dB adjustment because 0.5 dB is very little and you can barely hear that adjustment I found that the best solution to getting the amount of treble you want in this speaker is to play around with the placement and that is reflected in the off-axis measurement posted by in collaboration with NRC and Soundstage in the description box below. Here you can see my own sets of measurements that I took which simulate a anechoic response. Overall, pretty good. The blue line is the on-axis response and the green line is the plus 0.5 dB adjustment while the red line is the negative 0.5 dB adjustment. 
As you can see, the jumpers do what they say they do, but again, I found it far easier and better to just leave this at the 0 dB setting and adjust the speaker's toe-in to your taste. Here is a set of measurements comparing with and without the foam plug on the speaker. The green line is with the foam plug in and the blue line is without. With the foam plug, you can see that the roll off is more gradual, which corresponds to what I heard. Moving on to gear matching. I have tried several different integrated amplifiers with the Concept 300 and some were just not it, while some were just absolutely match made in heaven. I don't consider this speaker to be extremely hard to match with the right gear, but it also is not a walk in the park. I would consider this speaker a medium in terms of difficulty in matching it with the right gear. I tried several amps, but instead of me going over every single one, I will just mention two that I found to be a wonderful synergy and exceptional with the Concept 300. First is the new Billy amp from Heaven 11. I also have the previous version of this amp and that worked great too, but the new Billy amp paired with the Concept 300 brings out great body and bass authority while providing nice sound staging and holographic imagery. It also brings out little more finesse and excitement in the mid-range with 120 watts of power at 8 ohms and 215 at 4 ohms, it is also plenty powerful for most rooms with this speaker. My favorite though has to be this Brunico integrated amplifier. You may remember this amplifier from my visit to the RCA Korean bar where something unexpected happened. The sound made me tear up from getting emotional. So of course I requested the amplifier that was driving those huge RCA speakers because I was told the amplifier was made with the same blood as the RCA speakers. This is definitely the first time I heard an audio amplifier was made with the same blood. Definitely an Asian thing, but since I am part Korean, I did understand what he meant and decided to give it a try to see if it really had that same blood. And my God, it does. I can never forget that sound I heard at the Korean bar and it was transferred here in my listening room. These amps are special and despite it being only 20 watts per channel, it had absolutely no problem blasting the hell out of the Concept 300s. The soundstage and depth was enormous. The sweetness on the treble was to die for and it played perfectly in balance and harmony with the overall smooth and warmer tone of the Concept 300. I don't think I would have regrets if I chose this combination as my end game if I ever decided to close my channel down the next day. It was that good. It was just that good. I really liked the sound of the Audio Note Tonmeister that I reviewed in my recent video, but that is only 8 watts of power and it simply won't be able to drive the Concept 300s to rocking levels and it's very expensive at 19,000 USD. But the Bruno Go is 3,400 USD and was able to drive the Concept 300 speakers at 20 watts of power and was and for literally a small fraction of the price, I quite frankly found the Brunico to be more pure sounding with better detail and refinement while having that ultra room filling holographic sound stage that I love so much on the Tonmeister. And it is the only tube amplifier I found at this price range that made these Concept 300s sing and sound like a million bucks. I can't recommend it enough and I am dying to review it in its full glory soon. I know some people will be concerned as the stated sensitivity of the speaker is 84 dB with a nominal impedance of 6 ohms. However, sensitivity isn't everything and because the impedance of the speaker at its lowest point is 4.7 ohms, it is actually not the most difficult speaker to drive. Still, it does like some power behind it and likely will require it in a much bigger room than mine. I would say for most rooms, unless you are in a huge lot, 50 to 100 watts would do the job, but of course there are exceptions like the Brunoco that I talked about. Now a word of caution, if you pair up these speakers with the wrong amplifier, you will know right away because it will sound dry and quite frankly boring. I had guests over that knew nothing about the audiophile world when they first heard the Concept 300s with one of the pairings I was testing, which was the wrong pairing, uh, they were not impressed. They just didn't care for it. That was actually the day I decided to try the Brunoco amp and I'm glad I did 
when I had that pairing going, they all came and sat down to listen with, with jaws dropping and music requests coming one after the other nonstop. So there is a big difference in pairing with these speakers, and so keep that in mind. In terms of the setup process, it is a breeze. These speakers are easy to work with. You just got to play around with the toe-in to suit your taste. I had mine with just a slight toe-in. You should also have some space from the wall behind the speakers if you really want to play these without the foam plug. In my case, I needed a minimum of one meter away from the wall behind the speakers so the bass wouldn't get too boomy and muddy up the sound. Now again, that's if you're using it without the foam plugs. With the foam plugs, you can place it closer to the wall if you wish. If you want more depth, however, you will have to pull the speakers out and experiment, of course, as with most speakers. In terms of caveat, I really had to nitpick to find one, but it would be that this speaker isn't the absolute best in terms of low volume. It does okay, but it really starts to kick ass once you turn up the volume a little bit. I would say medium to loud volumes are where it really kicks some serious ass. And I guess because this is a middle ground between the likes of Sonos Favor and TAD, if you are someone with heavy preferences towards one side, either you like really bright speakers or a much, much more warmer speaker, then the QOQ6 may not be that right balance for you. But honestly, these are the only caveats I can think of for this one. And honestly, this speaker is freaking awesome. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, then please don't forget to click that like button as it helps me out greatly. Also, I have been working hard to find more hidden gems like the Bruno amplifier and the Concept 300 here. So make sure to also subscribe if you haven't already for future videos on the audio just like this one. And see you on the next one.